steps, six, seven, eight, five. Eight, 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 eight.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Fort Fry High School Marching Band. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask everyone to please stand who is able to do so and please remove your caps, gentlemen, for the playing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. And we're live here 
in Zanesville for this playoff game between the Barnesville Shamrocks and the Fort Pike Cadets. Hello everybody, my name is Brady Treherne. And I'm Brian Clark. And we are so excited to bring you this Division 6 playoff game. And here come the Shamrocks taking the field after Fort Fry. The Rocks in their all-white attire, green helmets, as they are the lower seed, which makes them the away team. Fort Fry on the north end of the field. Red pants, blue jerseys, and I'm, I don't know about you, Brian, but I'm super excited for this one. I'm happy to be here. We thought last week, uh, with it being the last home game for Barnesville, we thought we were done, and we're happy to be here with you and to be able to bring you another week of Shamrock football. Boy, this is a big one. This uh, yep. So this is a rivalry that has started, you know, for the last half a decade or so between these two teams, you know. With both teams um, being, you know, up-and-coming programs here in the last five to ten years, and they're constantly meeting each other in postseason play, whether it's in football, basketball, baseball, or any sport, really. And you know, yep. being in the same region, there's a, uh, you know, some bad blood being developed here, and it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out tonight. Yeah, and Fort Fry um, hasn't been beaten by the Shamrocks in football on the football field. Beaten them in a couple other sports, but. This is kind of the proverbial monkey off the back for the Shamrocks. They got to beat Fort Fry to take the next step as a program, and I'm I'm excited to see what they pull out to here. I mean, uh, a trip to the regional finals on the line for the a chance to go to the final four in the state. I mean, right now we're down to the final 16, looking to go to the final eight. Doesn't get much more better than this. And so we're underway here in Zanesville. As there is a squib that will be fielded around the 20-yard line. And it's going to get four, brought forward for a return of about 10. Look to be Owen Wise on the return there for the Rocks. And so the Rocks will set up on a 30 here, first and 10. Kicking off for um, Fort Fry was Mr. Do-It-All, Ian Ellis. And he's a nice player. He has, you know, played a ton of football for the Cadets in his time there, in his four-year career. And um, I know he's looking forward to the opportunity tonight. And yep. what, what an athlete, what a career yeah. he's had. And for the Rocks on offense, I expect them to try to control the tempo, control the ball, control the clock, but take a shot every now and then. Man. Whole playbook is open for the Rocks tonight. There's nothing doing there as Hannes will be in the I formation, turn around and hand it off to Owen Wise. Nothing doing. Gain of maybe half a yard. So that'll bring up second and about 10 here. Chase Connor, the, the senior, bringing into play here for the Rocks as they huddle up at the 20. And so just take a look at these key names you need to know for tonight Owen Brown for the Cadets, Mason Long, Ian Ellis. And Casey Brooker, four names that I expect to be calling a lot tonight for the cadets. As Hannes will be under center in the eye, he'll go play action, fake the wise, throws it out to the right side. Almost a bliss, incomplete as it was deflected there by number two. That is Owen Brown, and so it'll bring up third and ten. Yeah, and an interesting point of this matchup, it brings in the Eastern District co-offensive player of the year is both for Fort Fry against the Eastern District Defensive Player of the Year and Gavin Carpenter for the Rocks. You know, it'll be really interesting tonight because a ball like that, Brian, that gets completed last week. Yeah. It just does. But these um, cadets are coached really well, and they make plays when the ball comes to them. And, you know, that's been the biggest thing with the Rocks over the last couple of years. When a ball's thrown to someone in a big situation, the play just hasn't been made. And Fort Fry has did it time and time again. So if that wants to change tonight for the Rocks, they're going to have to make a couple plays. As Hannes is all day in a gun, rolls out to the right. He's going to look, throws, fires, almost picked off, actually hit his intended receiver in the chest, and it was incomplete, and that was Chase Connor. It looked like Stone Dixon had a great shot at a pick there, and it just went in between his hands, didn't get anything off of it, and I think the Shamrock receiver was surprised that it got through as clean as it did, and it just hit him, but that'll force a Shamrock punt early on, and not, what, not how Coach Blake Allen saw this game starting. Kind of look like the cadets almost ran the routes for the Rocks receivers right there. You can tell they're well prepared. I know they play that traditional 4-4 defense, but it ends up turning into a 5-2 the way they play. It. And one thing that's been said over and over again these this past week is the Shamrocks' margin for error is gone. They've made some mistakes. Ball's the on the ground, play. Brian. And that's big right there. Ball was on the ground. Number four back deep to receive for the cadets was Mason Long. Muffs the punt, 
And it looks like the, the Shamrocks had a great two shots at the ball and was not able to come up with it. And that is the type of plays you need to make against a team like Fort Fry. And like I was getting at, you know, Fort Fry has seemed more vulnerable this year than any of the last five years. But I think they're more talented yeah. than they have been in the last five years. So it's an odd combination that's, because they, they would have never did that a couple years ago. That's a fair ago. point. And we're going to see how disciplined these rocks are because Fort Fry runs a lot of misdirection. They will pound the ball. As you can hear, Shamrock Faithful getting behind this Rocks defense as they'll run a jet sweep. And that is out to Mason Love. Nothing doing there for the Cadets. It'll be second and 10, maybe 11 here. But a point I was going back to earlier before they muffed the punt was that in the previous two playoff rounds, the Rocks have made some mistakes, haven't played anywhere near perfect, but have been able to just out-talent the other team for the most part and able to advance. That kind of goes out the window tonight because Fort Fry is an extremely talented, extremely disciplined team. Beatable, but the Rocks have no, very little to no margin of error. So Ellis will bring the cadets up and they'll be in the wing here. They'll put Brown in motion and they'll run play fake and they got a man open in the corner. Doesn't throw it. Gets out of the pocket and he's going to pick up Enough for the well, – he's right at the first down marker, actually. This will be close. It's either going to be first and ten. They're going to wave the chains on. And so nice job there by Ian Ellis. You know, I thought he had a man running open to the corner there. Couldn't throw it because um, there was a guy in the flat and, you know, maybe was able to break on that ball. But, you know, the Rocks, Rocks – had good pressure there, just was unable to wrap up Ellis. And that's a big first down to move the chains. Yeah. It, that was a huge play there by Ian Ellis. You know, the Rocks did have good pressure, but they got out of their rush lanes and enabled Ellis to escape through the middle. And so the Cadets will get back in their wing set, and they'll put Brown in motion, and they'll hand it off. That's to their fullback. On a little dive action there. And that was number 12 for the Cadets. That's Ethan Dusky. And that wing series, it's just... I mean, it's what Fort Fry thrives on, but it's just so tough to game plan for, especially in a week. But I think the Rocks have kind of been preparing for this game since last year when they lost to him in the playoffs. So see if that's any better. So the Cadets will go two tight ends, two wings, and a fullback, and they'll put a man in motion. They'll run a jet sweep around the right side. Maybe. I think I was fooled as well as some of the Rocks' defenders. It's actually um, number four, Mason Long's the one who ended up taking a – hand off there and it'll be third and about two or three and i believe long is one of the previously mentioned co-offensive player of the years in the eastern district for his division so to bring up third short here i would expect nothing other than a jet sweep here if i know fort fry from my experience with him but they're actually going to go back to a belly series here hand it off to owen brown he's got enough for the first down Nice little play there. You know, they use motion so much and all the window dressing to get linebackers' eyes moving left to right instead of having your defenders yes. playing downhill. And, and Fort, it's so hard to defend. Fort Fry's not going to do anything too fancy, but they are going to do a lot of misdirection, a lot of motion, try to get the Shamrock defense um, out of position. But to this point, the Rocks D has done pretty well to limit gains, but still, Fort Fry's been move, able to move the chains pretty effectively in the early going. One receiver at the bottom of your screen, that'll be number 11, Braxton Brown. As Ellis drops back, looks to throw, he's, he's got, got a man wide open. That's Mason Long, touchdown, Cadets. And that's kind of been the Achilles heel of this Shamrock defense the whole time. The, um, the defensive backs are so focused on stopping the run that they have been vulnerable to a double move and a deep pass, and that time there was just no one within 10 yards of them. Great pass by Ellis. And a great beautiful pass. Yeah. Great call by Fort Fry, and uh, definitely not the start that the Shamrock faithful had seen for this game. That was such a huge play right there. You know, the, the cadets, they do such a great job with their spacing. Everything is so structured in everything they do. And um, guys aren't just running a route just to be there. They're running around with the purpose of an intent of getting the football thrown to them, and you saw it right there as he was able to burn C.J. Hannes there up the middle. As the cadets will be on to kick the extra point, and it just barely sneaks through. I didn't get much higher than it needed to be. Surprised it wasn't blocked at the line there. So that'll bring our score here in Zanesville. Cadets 7, Rocks nothing with 7.55 left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, Ben, I mean, if you're Barnesville, 
just got to play your game. I mean, you weren't expecting to shut out for a fry. There, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But, I mean, just got to play your game on offense. Look to find some gaps in that D. They're tough to run on, but I think the Shamrocks running attack has been pretty solid all year. And they throw in a lot of bubble screens, things like that, that gets the defense a little bit out of position. And I look for a few tweaks to that uh, from what we saw in the first series there from the Rocks. You know, that's the thing. You know, the way Coach Huck runs his offense is they have like an if-then series. And so if you want to have your safeties come up and be productive in the box, which helps out extremely in stopping the run, they're going to have a counter ready for you off of that. You know, the wing offense like that is structured a little bit differently than most offenses, and that if-then series really gives people some trouble. As number 10 for the cadets, Ian Ellis, is going to kick it off. And the Saints spot is last time. A little bit of trouble there for a look to be Chase Connor on picking that kick up, and it'll get to about the 29 on the right hash. So that's where the Rocks will set up shot. I think we're going to eventually have to see the Rocks start attacking that ball off the kickoff because until he shows that uh, they can kick it deep, I think you got to start moving up a little bit and try to catch that ball in the air or get a return going because well, that's th when Barnesville has been extremely yeah. dangerous in the return game. You know, they did a lot of good things this year on special teams, which has been kind of an Achilles heel for them the last couple of years. And so we'll see if those big players for Barnesville are able to make a play here. So Rocks will be in a strong pistol set. Bliss, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Hans will take the snap, looks, throws, pop pass, misses his intended receiver. That was Chase Connor. so it'll bring up second and ten. Now, don't think Hannes ever really got full control of that ball before he tried to throw it. He threw a bullet, but it was just a little off target. He just missed Connor right there, threw it right behind him. Lucky it wasn't intercepted, actually. Usually you throw a ball like that over the middle that quick, it uh, could be going the other way. So it'll be second 10 here at about the 29-yard line. Right hash. Cold night here in Zanesville, yep. Brian. Definitely cold, but uh, Shamrock Faithful traveled pretty well tonight. Uh, the it's a little deceiving because four fries on the home side, but uh, still a good amount of fans for them. Sanis will take the snap, drops, throws, fires for Chase Connor, incomplete through two different players' hands. Over there on the coverage was number 27, Stone Dixon. I think he had a shot at it, yeah. actually. He played it very well, and then it bounced off him, and Chase Connor also had a shot yep. at it. And we're seeing Barnesville fall behind schedule on these early downs uh, through two possessions both times, really. And just not – like, they're a power run team for the most part, but uh, I don't know if they're – haven't really been following the game plan that I think Coach Allen had for them, at least at the start of the game. So it'll be third and ten here as the Cadets get an Oki front, and Hannes will drop, drop, throws, fires, complete the bliss. First down, Rocks. And that was much needed for the Rocks. I mean, they needed to move those chains and get keep Fort Fry's offense off the field there. Actually, Brian, you talk about game plan. I think it's evident to me that the game plan here was not to attack like we have been all year on the run. And whether that's because they don't believe they got the matchups for it or whatever, maybe an injury that we don't know about, it's evident to me that they want to attack these DBs, and they probably feel this is where Fort Fry is weakest, and I would agree with that. Well, yeah, I would too, and I think Fort Fry's probably seen seen the film of us being a power running team like here you'll see wise take the carry right up the middle keeping trying to keep fort fry guessing i mean if you get too one dimensional you're pretty easy to stop so uh i think coach allen's just kind of in a chess match with coach huck and keeping both sides keeping both guessing like fort fry on that long touchdown pass is able to uh kind of surprise the shamrock dbs so it'll be second and about eight here 706 remaining here in the first quarter. Cadets up seven to nothing as the Rocks will be in a strong eye formation. Hannes will run play action a waggle. They don't get the end seal to still have to throw it quickly to his fullback. Overthrows it, but they're gonna say he's out of bounds, although it looked like it was intercepted. Cadet Faithful is going ballistic. That is a huge break for the Rocks. I mean, I don't think Luke Taylor ever saw that ball really coming and was barely able to get a hand on it. Hannes is throwing some bullets so far, but uh, a little off target on a couple of them. See, that, that was a, a thing there. You know, Salvador Alvarez, a freshman filling in at a 
left guard there for the Rocks. And the Rocks run that Waggle series where they pull the backside guard. And he's got to get out there and seal the end. You know, yeah, they run the play hand. fake to get guys moving away. And you come back with that. And he just really didn't do a very good yeah. job of getting the end seal. And that yeah. one might have been as much as his fault as yeah. it was Hannes's. Hannes was running for his life from the get-go on that one. Hannes will drop back. Fake bubble screen. They're going to run a slip screen off of it. And Connor's going to get up the middle of the field. And he's going to get rocked. Ball's loose. Recovered, luckily, by number eight. I do believe that's Luke Datling. And they're actually going to give him the forward progress. So Rocks are extremely lucky as Connor got absolutely rocked. That's the breaks you need to get in a game like this. But Connor, like, he's running down the middle of the field. He's got to know he's going to be taking a hit. He's got to cover that ball a little bit better there. The Rocks but, are also really lucky yeah. there. When Chase Connor caught that screen, he had Lyman downfield. So you got to catch it behind the line of scrimmage. And I don't think he did. I think the rest yeah, missed I, that one right there. Should have went backwards. Yep. And, and then you get extra yards with the fumble. Rocks lucky there in two different ways. So that'll bring a first and 10 here on the 29 here midway through the first as they're going to throw a hitch out the corner, overthrown, Got and a, a flag yeah, thrown as well. First flag of the game. We'll see what happens here. I do believe this is going to be a uh, sideline warning maybe. Yep, sideline warning on Coach Allen. He's due for about one of those a game. I, I don't, think he, I don't think he was counting on getting one that quite this early in this one. You know, I coached with Coach Allen for two years and uh, really appreciate all that he's ever did for me. But, uh, you know, he's one of those fiery competitors, which you need to be, but uh, sometimes they'll get the best of him, and the refs don't appreciate oh, yeah. that as much as you get away with at the college level compared to high school. And as you move further into the playoffs, yeah, that's one thing the refs will not let you get away with. Nice little play there by the Rocks. They tried to run a little um, jet power concept there, but it only picks up about two as the cadets were able to read a pile in the middle. There. I think that's designed for Bliss to take it to the outside, but he thought he saw a hole in the middle, but it closed up extremely quickly, and uh, cadets just able to pile on top of him and limit him to a minimal gain. 5.45 left to go here in the first. It'll be third and about 10. Ball to 29. Hans will be in the gun all by himself. He's on a roll to the right, looks, throws, fires right to a cadet. And that's number, looks to be number 83 on the interception there. Nobody in the roster wearing number 83. And so a huge play there by the cadets, and that's where they'll take over at the 35, heading the other way. Yep. And the Shamrocks have been playing with fire in the passing game through two possessions in this first part of this first quarter. And they finally just did get burned there. Cadets are doing a really nice job right now with their um, pass defense. They uh, they kind of run like a, um, a pattern match concept where they'll be in zone, but it'll really look like man to the you know average fan. And they have rules based off that. And they've been in the right places a lot of times here early this game. Yep, nothing's easy for the Rock so far. Nice little trap play here back to Mason Long. And he's going to pick up about eight or so here on first down as they're able to fake that. Yeah. Hand off to the fullback and then turn around and hand it off to the wing coming back right underneath the fullback. Another little wrinkle in the four fry playbook that we hadn't seen to this point, but they run a lot. So it'll be second about a three here. Ball on the 43 yard line. Just under five minutes to go here in the first quarter in Zanesville. Ellis will take the snap, hand it off to number two. That's Owen Brown. Right around the first down marker at the 45 and a half, 46 yard line. They're going to mark him short, but it's about third and maybe a half. And Owen Brown on the year, 627 yards rushing, but in an astounding 9.6 yards per attempt. That's just incredible to go along with 9.1 yards per reception. I mean, just a big play threat for the cadets. Time called here by the refs. I think they're going to talk about it. And they're going to give him the first down, actually. I thought it did look uh, looked like he was on the line, and typically when you get to the line, it's a first down. So, <sighs> so it'll be first and ten here for the cadets as Ellis will bring them up to the line of scrimmage. They'll have a tight end and a wing up the top of your screen. No tight end at the bottom, but a receiver, and he'll put a man in motion. It'll be play action. He's got a man wide open in the flats. That's number 12, Ethan Dusky. He's going to 
pick up some extra yardage there after the catch and hope he get brought down around the 34. Yeah, but I think the Shamrock backers, a couple of them got caught going after that handoff and the other couple tried to blitz to get to Ellis before he could make the throw and Ellis just was able to evade the pressure and find an open receiver in the flats. So with 4.13 left to go here in the first period, Cadets up 7-0. Cadets driving as well. One receiver at the bottom of your screen, that'll be number 11. That's Braxton Brown. Ellis will be in of gun. He'll roll out to his right. He's got a hitch, and he doesn't throw it. He's going to get pressure, gets out of a sack, but falls down there. And so a huge play for the Shamrocks. Ethan Spangenberg there with the yeah, pressure. Spangenberg supplied the pressure, and uh, Ellis was actually able to evade him at first, but then just slipped, and uh, there's a couple more Shamrock defenders there to finish up the job. And uh, putting the cadets behind the chains a little bit, so... I mean, this is the recipe for success against them. I mean, they like to run the ball and everything, so putting them in a second and 19, I mean, that's a recipe for success if you're the Rocks. You just can't, No stupid penalties. Yeah, no stupid penalties, and you just got to watch uh, watch the flats. Ellis will put Brown in motion. He's going to drop back, pass. They're going to have a wheel on the backside. Taysom starts over there, but he doesn't get there in time as the cadets are going to pick up the first down. That's a heck of a throw there. I mean, just put it right over the Shamrock defenders' heads and able to drop it in there. You know, I can tell that the Rocks are in the right area on some of these plays, like they've did a, their homework, but it just seems that they are just not getting there at the same step, speed as the cadets. Step slow so far. I mean, both teams on defense have been in the right spots. It's just the cadets have been able to capitalize on the early going. Star was over there like he was supposed to be and uh, just wasn't able to get to that, which would have been huge. And so there'll be two tight ends here for the cadets and two wings as they'll put Brown in motion as they'll hand it off. And that'll be Dusky plowing ahead for about a strong six, it looks like, and that'll bring up second and about four or three. Here as we meander our way through the first quarter in Zanesville. And Fort Pride just slow and methodical. Yeah. Moving the chains, keep them moving. and Death by a thousand yeah. cuts. Ellis will be under center. Puts his man in motion. That'll be Brown. And they'll run play fake. Play action. They got a man drifting across the middle. Pressure. Rock's trying to get him. And they do balls on the ground. But the cadets able to jump one again. That was Owen Brown. That ends up being about a net gain of zero. I mean, nothing hurt really for the cadets other than loss of down. So again, another we've seen another play that the Rocks really need to yeah. make uh, to get back into this game. So right back where they started, the cadets will have it third and ten here with 145 left to go here in the first period. As the Rocks were all over the three passing concepts over there, but it looks like they're having trouble lining up. Because Ellis will be under center. He's going to put long in motion. And they're going to hand it off to Brown. As he finds his way up through for about three or four tackle. And that's going to bring up a huge fourth down here early in this ballgame. Yep. And, I mean, I hate to say make or break moment in the first quarter. But this might be one of them. I was just thinking that, Brian. You know, if there was ever a play in the first quarter that I've been a part of that I think means maybe almost the ball game. I would say maybe this is it. So Ellis will be in the gun, but they'll still be in our normal wing set. With two Expect to see a roll out here. As it looks like there's going to be a fly call. And Full start on the cadets, and so that's going to push him back to fourth and 11. And they're going to call it on number seven, I do believe. That's Zayden Huck. Now here's an interesting one here. I don't believe the cadets have a they don't have a kicker listed so i mean that'd be an extremely impressive field goal for high school but uh, fourth and 11 changes things you just cannot get beat deep eh. you well, it looks like ellis will be under center here so we'll see what they got conjured up here as they'll put a man in motion and run play action he's got a man kind of open in a flat walks trying to get there ellis is going to take it himself and he's going to get tackled but not and pick up about five, but it's going to be a turnover on downs for the cadets. 
versus Ben Shamrocks. And uh, Shamrocks extremely fortunate there. I thought they were in trouble. Spangenberg had contain on the outside, and I thought he did an extremely good job. But then he decided to go after the quarterback because he was right there, and Ellis just able to evade him and pick up. But credit to the Shamrocks D for stopping him before he can reach the chains. And it's a big moment in this game. The Shamrocks go down two scores early. That's tough to come back yeah. from against a running team like that. It's really so hard. See if they can run the field here. So Hannes will be in the gun. Actually, it's not Hannes, it's Bliss. And he fumbles the football. Jumped back on by Shamrock. And it was Bliss who jumped on it. So it'll bring up second and forever here for the Rocks. Not what you wanted to happen. Yeah, extremely fortunate again there. I mean, you pick up that huge stop on fourth down, and then the very next play you put the ball on the ground. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter as the teams will switch sides here. Your score in Zanesville, Fort Fry, Cadet 7, of the Barnesville Shamrocks, nothing. Yeah, and talking about Fort Fry, I mean, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the job that Coach Eric Huck has done over there. I mean, since taking over in, I believe, 08, had two losing seasons to start and then just started building his program, won a, P a couple PVC championships when they were in that league, and then uh, moved on to OVAC titles, and now they've turned themselves into legit state championship contenders for the most part. I mean, made the Final Four last year, I believe, lost yeah. their lost the Final Four game in Zanesville at this very stadium. You know, it's one of those things that now people look at Fort Fry as the expected winner out of this region every year, and uh, it avoids a tough region to be in that Barnesville's in. And, um, you know, we look at the, the game that the winner of this contest will play. And so right now being played is West Jefferson, which is on the western side of Columbus. And they're playing Proctorville Fairland, which is a town right beside Chesapeake, which is where we made my playoff so trip in 2016. extremely close to Cole Grove, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, really, you're really all over the state in this region. So, yeah, you know, when you're in this region, um, there's not as many schools, you know, like there is in some of these places. You look at some of these regions, and they're all Cleveland schools. They're all Youngstown schools. They're all Toledo schools. And it's just not that way in southeastern Ohio with a lot of yep. rural area. And so, you know, whoever makes it out of this contest is going to have to travel, whether it's going to play Fairland and probably Chillicothe or Athens. Yep. And or if it's playing West Jefferson and maybe here or maybe closer to um, Columbus. So it'll be interesting for whoever makes it out of this game alive. So Hannes will be in the pistol. He'll drop back, looks, throws, and they look like they had a little bit of a flat route there for Connor Jones. They were wanting to hit, and it was tipped at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. That was a right. great play there by Caleb run. Briggs for Fort Fry. Just yeah. uh, was, I think, believe had contain on the edge, but just was able to get a hand on that pass. And if you're the Shamrocks O-line, you just can't let him get up the field like that to get contained, especially when you know you're throwing a screen pass. You know, they did a nice – the cadet lineman right there, um, Riggs, did a really nice job penetrating the edge there. And, you know, the Rocks were trying to slip their fullback out to the flats, pick up, you know, maybe seven or eight yards on that little flat route to cut it in half, but he does a nice job and bats it down. And so that brings up a third and forever here as Coach Blake Allen's going to call timeout. They didn't – weren't either lined up right, wasn't called in right, or – Saw well, something they didn't like, but... Fort Fry did throw out, I believe that was a 3-3-5 there that I don't think that the Rocks were re quite ready for, so kind of even above a nickel package Yeah. Um, for this third and long. I think they were counting on having, like, linebackers on in the slot, and they ended up having corners on the slot receivers. That or maybe there was a guy, you know, maybe they were going to roll one way and just weren't able to get to it. Just want to give a shout-out to tonight's sponsors of the game. Strauss Films, always we thank you guys for letting us being able to broadcast these games to everyone back home. Hissom Service Center, Artworks, Bostick Concrete, Campbell Plumley, The Elks, Hartley Marshall, Main Street Barrel House, Main Screen Printing, and Sam Welsh. We want to really thank all of our sponsors for letting us, you know, have, you know, let this be possible, yep. really. And I'm happy to be up here another week. Really fortunate to get what we do, Brian. Yep. And see what the 
Coach Allen's dialed up here. Uh, they changed the formation. It'll yep. be in a two by two, or no, it'll be trips to the bottom of your screen. As Hannes is going to roll out, looks, tries to throw, was covered up, and he's going to get brought down, sacked by number 52 for Fort Fry. That's Hunter Kesserling. And he's that boy, he's had a nice season for the cadets. That's one that'll drive you crazy. Fort Fry only rushing three there and still able to get a sack or pretty much a that was more or less a coverage there, sack. Yeah. Coverage sack, but uh, Fort Fry Dean Lyman did a great job of playing Tain, not really expecting to rush, fully rush the quarterback, but just staying in their zones, and Hannes ran into Salvador one of them. So Salvador Alvarez, Alvarez will be back to punt. This is a new one here, Brian. Yeah, I haven't seen him punt this year. And so snap is good. Kick, decent, low line drive, and it's going to creep up towards midfield, cross it. And stop rolling at about the 47-yard line. So that's where Fort Fry will take over here with 11 minutes to go in the second quarter, up seven. And when you have to punt deep in your territory, I mean, I think the best you're expecting is to get it, hopefully get it a little past midfield. So yeah. good job there by the freshman. That was impressive. You know, you throw a kid in a situation like that where he hasn't <laughs> did it all nothing, season. Nothing like making your first punt in the regional semifinal game, right? <laughs> Nice job there. So it'll be first and ten here for the cadets as they'll come out with one wide receiver, a tight end, and two wings and a fullback. Ellis will put his man in motion. He's going to turn on and hand it off, and that is two number five. That's Colin Welsh, who actually has a relation to Barnesville. So his dad, Kevin Welsh, is the cousin of former educator in Barnesville schools. Mike Welsh. And yeah, I've, I didn't have him in school, but I've heard legends about Mr. Welsh. And Fort Fry not really getting anything big games besides that first uh, touchdown, but nickel and diming the Shamrocks defense yeah. to death. This will be second about four here for the cadets as he'll put his man in motion, turn around and hand it off to Welsh again. Picks up about two, and that's all. Because the Rocks were on that one, able to get off their blocks there and make a nice play to those defensive linemen. Several in there on the tackle. Hard to give credit to one guy there. Yeah, good job. Uh, DNs had contained, and then I think the linebackers cleaned that up pretty well. Did a nice job rallying to the football. So to bring up third and short. And, you know, at mid cross midfield, Brian, this might be four down territory. I wouldn't it's, be surprised they take a shot here. It's, it's tough to stop this rushing attack for two downs when they just need two. And they're going to run the jet sweep and that's with number four Mason Long. He's going to get up around the right side. Plows forward. Runs over his own blocker. Fly throwing him extremely late. And it was thrown at number 53 for the cadets. And that is number um, 53 Caleb Bailey. And I think this one's coming back on a holding. What a shame, because I think that was that might have been, you know, after he picked up the first down. Yep. Coach Huck's got to be curious another one. about that. Here's another one that uh, cadets are third and long. Or not third and long. Brings him right. Yeah, third and two. But another chance to stop him here. But, yeah, I mean, he was well beyond the first down marker when yeah. that hold occurred. So we'll try it again. Third and two here with 9.34 left to go here in the second quarter. Shamrock Faithful giving it their all for the defense, trying to help them get off the field. As I do suspect it's four down territory as Ellis will put his man in motion. Fumble. Fumbles the ball. And he's going to lose about three there. And that's going to bring up a huge fourth down decision for Coach Huck as he's going to bring out the I punt unit. That, wow. That's a big break for the Rocks there. And... Normally don't see those types of plays from Fort Fry. Normally extremely disciplined, won't beat themselves, but they haven't had that big turnover yet, but they've been flirting with it awfully close so far. You know, there's been three times I think Fort Fry's got away with one tonight, and I was telling you before the broadcast started, I think this is might be Fort Fry's one of their most talented teams they've had in the last five years. This the snap is a little bit high, but going to be kicked off here by number 63 for the cadets. That is Carter Brooker. And they're going to let it roll down to about the eight-yard line. But as I was saying, you know, I think it's one of the more talented teams. But they've made a lot of mistakes this year, but yeah. got away with them thus far. And played an extremely tough schedule too. Oh my I mean, goodness! Well, they've played. already played on this field once this year. 
and played Zanesville, a, a way bigger school, and beat them. Division three school yeah. there. They played Zanesville. They hosted um, their one loss this year was to Lima Central Catholic, who's the I want to say they were in the state championship last year in Division Seven, and they came down and played Fort Fry, and um, you know beat they beat, beat up their Henry, schedule. Beat St. Henry, who's a MAC powerhouse, and I believe still playing right now. So Fort Fry really beats up their schedule. It's paying dividends for them right now. So Rocks will turn around and hand it off to Owen Wise. He's going to pick up about two, maybe, and it'll bring up second and eight. And going back to that fourth down, I think that was in a spot where we could have easily saw four fry going for it. But I think they're betting on the Shamrocks offense not being able to move. Yeah. Pin them deep and make them punt it again, and we uh, cadets take over with good field position. So you know, far to this point, Barnesville hasn't shown the ability to move the ball very much on offense. Other than a nice um, third down conversion where um, Hannah threw it to Bliss on a little out route. Um, there really hasn't been nothing doing for the Rocks here on offense. No, trying to establish the running game, but four fry is just extremely tough. Barnes will run a waggle here as Hannes is going to be able to get around. He's going to loft it up to Chase Connor, deflected by Ian Ellis. Another extremely dangerous pass there. And a nice job there. So Connor was actually covered by another man, and Ellis just having the football awareness to continue to rally to the play. And he comes out of nowhere and deflects it. And honestly, that's a play, like we talked about earlier, one you get away with in the season. That's one that they very could easily complete against a team, you know, in yep. the regular season. But a player like Ian Ellis, who's played so much crucial football for Fort Fry, he's going to be able to make that play. And just according to Fort Fry's play, and Shamrock's facing the third and long deep in their own territory. One high safety here for the cadets. His hand is going to throw it, and it's high, but he gets it to Bliss. Caught! First down, Shamrocks. It's about as good a coverage as you can have there. That's just a great throw and a great catch by Bliss. Great concentration to make that catch, and that is a much-needed first down for the Rocks. That was one of the nicer throws Hannes has made tonight, as a lot of them have actually been off target and has got him in trouble thus far. And Bliss wasn't what I'd even consider open there. No. Just a uh, perfect pass in the perfect spot. You know, a good receiver, even when he's covered, he's open. Yep. Exactly. See if the Rocks can uh, keep this drive going here. So the Rocks will get back into the I formation. Jones, the fullback. Wise, the tailback, and he'll get it. And they go ahead for about three there as he ran through the arm tackle of the outside backer. That was number 27 there for the cadets, Stone Dixon. But Wise still able to pick up three there. And will bring up second seven. And... Barnesville and their rushing attacks used to their offensive line just being able to open yeah. up holes, but Fort Fry doing an extremely good job of filling in the gaps, and that's one of Wise's best runs to this point, but it was a hard-earned three. So the Rocks will fake a power, throws it to Chase Connor, and he drops it incomplete as they ran that play earlier in the game. And uh, that was the one where Hannes missed him wide behind him. They Looks had him open. They came yeah. back to it. And then in this one, right in Connor's Looks like the lap, throw, he yeah, drops the throw it. was a lot more on target this time. And Rock's just not doing themselves any favors right now. I mean, that would have been another chain mover for the uh, offense. So it'll be third and seven here. As Hannes will be in the gun with Jones, his blocking back. And he's going to throw an interception. That's number 83. Not on the roster. Pick six for the cadets. And that's just Fort Fry reading the play, uh, putting the Shamrock in the third and long. And Rocks have already had to pass up more than I feel like they've planned on. But just read Hannes' eyes and able to go under the pass. And there was no one with a shot at him after that. I tried to listen to the PA announcer, and he had a – name for number 83 and he said cooper something i do believe and, I, and there's not one on the roster so we'll have to do some digging at halftime to figure out who he is because we've tried to call his name yep. a couple of times he's tonight. made a couple big defensive plays and none bigger than that one right now he did a nice job staying in his zone not panicking and you know the guy was open right behind him but hannah's didn't get enough air on it as his kick is up and good for the cadets and it goes back to that second down play connor open in the middle just unable to connect and puts the shamrocks in the third and long and i think the cadets have all the uh, confidence in the world that the rocks can't run against them right now so 
makes the Rocks a little bit one-dimensional, and Fort Fry just able to play in their zone and pick off the pass. You know, you look at some of those cadet um, defensive linemen, um, Kesserling and Brooker leading away for them, and just they do such a phenomenal job and really are doing a lot of what Barnesville wants to do on defense and kind of give them a yep. taste of their own medicine. So back and deep to return here for the Shamrocks. Number 11, that's Chase Connor. In the middle will be number three, Owen Wise. Haven't called his name much tonight. And then on the far side will be number 21, Spencer Bliss. And I don't think this kick's going to reach him this time either. No. They're still playing awfully deep. Ellis has punched it that way, but you look, they're, they're, they're audible and right now. See, they just made a call. They're not going to kick it to where they have before. Spencer Bliss just lined up there. And they're going to kick it to the opposite side and right to Chase Connor. And he's going to field it, get up to about the 30 again, just like the last three times, and uh, at the 31 precisely, and that's where the Rocks will take Nothing over. Nothing doing on the kick return game to this point. Well, no, I mean, you can't put Spencer Bliss anywhere. And it was obvious right there that Fort Fry was lined up and they were all set, and then their coach made a call, and they all looked over, and then they turned around, and they, even the kicker, Ellis, posi positioned himself differently because they're going to kick yep. it away from Bliss every time. And Shamrock's here, down 14 to nothing in this first half. Keegan Stroh, thank you. Don't be surprised if we see uh, digging into the playbook a little bit here. So number 83 is actually on our roster as 59. It's Keegan Strode, so nice play there by him. Hannes' pass thrown for Bliss, incomplete, and Bliss has got a little bit of a limp there. The coverage uh, on the play for the yep. cadets was number four, Mason Long, but and he, he, might, might he well ran a route for yeah, him. He was step for step with Bliss. Uh, taking a deep shot, we haven't seen that to this point, but I don't know. I, this game's in dangerous territory for the yeah. Rocks right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Allen dig into the box of tricks. I, I'm Sure, he didn't want to have to do it this soon, but this game, uh, your offense just is not moving the ball very effectively right now. Yeah, I don't know if Coach Allen's there yet because if they would have ran a trick play, it would have been right there on first down. As Hannes will take the snap, he's going to throw a toss out to Bliss. Makes one man miss. Two. Held on to, by Ian Ellis. Bliss drags him forward for a first down. Though. Nice little play there. Even though not a trick play, we haven't seen the Rocks try to run it outside of the hash marks to this point. They've been trying to just go right down Fort Fry's throat, and it's been stopped pretty effectively. So, well, they did try yeah. it one time earlier, but that was when Bliss fumbled it himself. Yeah. And that, I'm sure that shot down the confidence of doing something like Looked that. Looked like the same type of play design, and Bliss just able to make a man miss. So I think especially with Fort Fry kicking it away from Bliss, you're looking to get him the ball in as many creative ways as possible. How many different ways can you get Spencer Bliss the ball? And, you know, you see the cadets have got Owen Brown pressed up on him in the slot, taking away that bubble as Hannes is going to get out and around to the edge. Sacked there. And That's, this Shamrock offensive line cannot do rollouts right now. Four prize DNs are playing extremely disciplined and not falling for the traps on the inside and just able to beat the tackles going out. And that was number 66, Caleb Riggs there. On the huge sack, because I thought Hannes was just going to throw it away, but he never did, and it could have been a horse collar call, call there. It was pretty close, but uh, the bootleg pass is so much of a game for the Rocks, like so such a big part of their game plan, and it just has been shut down. So Hannes will run speed option out to the left, and he's going to pitch out to Bliss. Cadets are all over it. Nice play there by Owen Brown as he had the – the quarterback on the pitch, and usually how you defend that, Brian, is you got one guy responsible for the quarterback, one guy responsible for the pitch man. He played them both right there. And, I mean, that can't happen. I mean, simple as that. I mean, you got a two on one. You got to make him chew, uh, commit to one so he can't make the play on the other. That'll drive a coach mad whenever you run an option play and one defender is able to take out both ball yep. carriers. So it'll be third and about 23 here for the Rocks. After the big sack, his hands is going to drop back, and it's going to be a draw. He's going to plunge forward up to about the 38. Picks up about eight, but that'll bring up fourth down as the Rocks will send out the punting unit here. And should be able to flip the field a little more uh, effectively than last time. Not as deep in their territory. This punt will take off from about the 37-yard line. 
Barnesville got away with a hold right there. They could be way back deep in their own territory. So Salvador Alvarez, once again, the freshman's going to be set to punt here. Van Horn, the personal protector. Snap is good. Punts almost blocked by a guy off the backside edge. Fair caught by number four, Mason Long. And so the cadets will take over at about the 29 with 409 left to go here before half. I know I've said it multiple times, and I don't mean to say it, but a rocks again flirted with disaster there. That punt was about a half second away from being blocked and going the other way for Fort Fry. The thing about punt coverage is you got to leave one man unblocked because they have one more man, you know, yep. for the um, the punter when they look at coverage, right? you got your one man deep, and there's just usually one man you can't block. So Ellis will be in the gun. He's going to roll to his right. No pressure at all. As he's going to float it out there. That's the number 11. Braxton Brown on the reception. He's going to pick up the first down here after a gain of 11 up to the 40. And Fort Pride just having a little bit easier time moving the ball against the Rocks defense. I mean, the defense playing, playing tough and in the right spots. Fort Fry just able to find some gaps in the coverage. So the cadets will get back under center. Brown will be the receiver at the bottom of your screen. One side end, two wings and a fullback. So he'll put his man in motion and he'll hand it off to Welsh. And he's going to pick up about a strong five there. And, you know, the thing, Brian, I've seen tonight is the Rocks players are not moving forward in a violent way. The cadets are doing what they want at will and are heading right downfield. I think the Rocks defensive linemen especially are so concerned about trying to find who has the ball yeah, that they're not side trying to side. get they're not trying to get penetration at all and it's been working against the cadets run game for the most part but whenever the cadets pass there's just been no pressure because of that and they'll hand it off to welsh here and as he ma ma breaks the first oh, tackle picks up the first down Chase Connor is going to be the rock that brings him down. And so the cadets will have it here at the Barnesville 48-yard line here. Keep an eye on the clock, 312 and counting here before half. You know it would be huge, Brian, if the cadets go down and score and go up three scores before yeah, half. Yeah, if you're, if you're the rocks, you can't. You can't let this get to three scores by halftime. you got to come up with a defensive stop here. It looks like a just true quarterback sneak as Ellis rumbles ahead for about a pickup of 15. Looks like there might have been a two-gap bubble there. I don't know if that was on purpose or on accident, and Ellis saw it and ran with it. Well, the Rocks they, weren't ready. Again, the Rocks defensive lineman not trying to find any pressure right now and just trying to see who has the ball and go after them and comes back to bite him there. Quick hitter. I don't end up being, what, a 20, close to a 20-yard sneak? Don't say that too often as Ellis will put his man in motion and he'll run the counter back to the other side. And that is number four, Mason Long. And, and he's going to pick up about eight. That was a touchdown saving tackle there. The holes that the cadets are making are just massive right now. Marveling at the way their yep. offensive line is playing right now. You know, I'm an offensive line guy, so I like, whenever and I see something like that, I get a little jacked up. Just so much misdirection. And if you gave you a full off season to get ready for it, you might have a little bit better chance, but when you have one week to get ready for this, it's a, it's a tough offense to prepare for. And so they'll hand it to Long on a jet sweep. Gets a nice block out there at the top of your screen by his receiver. We're under two minutes here, and the cadets picking up another first down. So first down cadets, as Long was able to get up to about the 15 on that right side. Cadets marching. Minute 43 and counting as it looks like they're just going to try to time this up and punch one in before half if they can. Shamrock Faithful trying to give the defense an extra boost as they'll hand a jet to the other side, and that's going to be to Owen Brown. Picks up about seven or eight again, Brian. And poor Fry, I mean, <laughs> they're getting dangerously close to breaking one. Yeah. What started out as being limited to two or three yard gains has turned into five, six, seven yard gains. And that's it's not a good sign for the Rocks. They got to tighten up their defense and quick. It's funny how we talk so highly of the Shamrock defensive line. 
this whole season, and right now, this seems to be the weakest link on the team. Yeah, I think they're just a little gassed. Uh, Gavin Carpenter, I think he's been double teamed on about every yep. single uh, every single play. That they know who they have to block yep. extremely well, and Four Fry just throwing so many different wrinkles in the running game at you that I think. They're, they have confidence that they don't have to go into the air. They went into the air on the first uh, touchdown and was able to burn the Shamrocks DBs, but I think they have confidence that they can kind of go right at what is supposed to be the Shamrocks' strong point of the defense and the linebackers and D-line. You know, we reflect back here on what's happened thus far in the first half. Three times the cadets have put the ball on the ground and recovered all three. Yep. Imagine if one or two of those go the Rock's way. Probably looking and at a different It's just one of those bounces of those balls that just needs to go the Shamrock's way for them to pull off this upset. And um, On the other hand, side, we've seen Hannes throw two picks. Not necessarily his fault on either one of them, but... Fort Fry winning the turnover battle, and if you want to knock off a power like a Fort Fry's of the world, you have to win the turnover battle amongst other things. Ellis will be under center. He'll put long in motion. He'll fake the handoff and give it to Welsh. Plows forward behind his offensive line. Picks up about three there, and he's going to get to about the three-yard line. And so that'll bring up first and goal with 55 seconds and counting. And uh, I think they called a timeout here. Yeah, Cadets, Coach Huck will take a timeout. And that'll be their first of the half. And so they got 50 seconds and four shots to you yeah, know, take a shot the, at the all end All the time in the world, basically, from here. And if you're the Shamrocks defense and defensive coordinator Bryce Allen, you need a stop desperately here. Not going to be really any time left to uh, do anything on the offensive end in this half. So if you do not get a stop here, you're going into the locker room more than likely down three scores. Yeah, this is huge for the Rocks if they're able to. But they're going to have to get four stops in a row, which is extremely hard against a team like this. But the one thing you don't have to worry about is a, some sort of a deep pass, and so you guys can play up close to the line of scrimmage. But you got to watch they'll streak someone across yeah. the back of the end zone. For, for the most part, Shamrocks have looked like they've been playing about eight in the box anyway. So, uh, I mean, we'll see. Probably a goal line set. Looks like a couple extra defensive linemen in there. So, first and goal here from the There's three. There's a gap right at the guard. Ellis will be under center and will run the jet sweep out the long. Patiently waits on his blockers. Touchdown, cadets. And Shamrocks went heavy on the defensive line, so they just uh, the jet sweep is a critical part of the four fry offense and just counting on their running backs being able to beat the Shamrocks uh, heavy set out to the edge, and it works out for them. Uh, you know, Brian, I, thus far I've been amazed in the way Fort Fry's been able to block here. You know, whatever they're doing to teach these guys to block on the edges is just incredible what they've been able to accomplish. And it showed right there, you know, the Rocks had a couple defenders out there but weren't able to get off a block. Yep. They had two guys out there to make a play but weren't able to get off a block. As the cadets will attempt the extra point, looks much better than the last one. Good. And so the Fort Fry cadets up 21 to nothing with 48 seconds left here before half. And I think the, uh, the cadets have just found a kind of a recipe for success for small school programs. Uh, they just kind of run something that teams aren't used to seeing on offense. So yeah. the wing tee, just something a little different, and they run it extremely well. But then focus on your defense. If the other team can't score, they won't win. And I think that it's a simple philosophy, but I think it's something that Fort Fry's adopted. And uh, big score from around the valley, uh, River and Shadyside playing tonight at was that a Ferry. Ferry? Yeah, Martins Ferry hosting that game. River uh, up 21-13 in the second quarter. If you remember, uh, Shamrock's knocked out – or beat River in their regular season, but River turned around and played Shady Side, which is the Shamrock's only loss to this point of the season. Extremely tough, only losing 14-12, to 12, and just coming off a week where they knocked off the number two seed, Burn Union, by yeah. you know, close to 30-plus points in that game. Hard to believe that score, Brian, based off what we've seen. As it looks like they're Bliss, moving Bliss around. Yeah, uh, they're playing games here. 
as Ellis is going to kick it off. And they're finally going to kick one to Bliss, but he misses it. And he, but he's going to pick it up on the ground. Kind of an odd setup there as Bliss is going to get around the right side, but tackled at around the 15. Nothing doing there. And if you look, the Cadets had seven guys on the ball. I mean, you, no matter how good you are as a skill player, you aren't running any, uh, anything back too far with seven uh, members of the kickoff team just running pretty much unimpeded at you. That's not all Bliss's or, um, you know, the kickoff team's fault. Because it's tough to block on kickoffs. Well, Bliss and Wise bobbled it right yeah. there for about three seconds, and that's an that extra two or three yeah. seconds. So you get, you know, your 15, 20 yards on your return. So, um, Hannes will be in a gun and he'll fake a jet to Bliss, and it'll just another huge pile at the line of scrimmage. And Hannes is going to get maybe one. And that's being generous. It's Fort Fry's going to take a timeout, and so they'll have and one left. And uh, now it's going to be decision time here. They yep. basically forced the Shamrock Santa. You got to run it three times, yep. and you're not going to score before half because if yep. because if you try to throw it, we're just going to call timeout yep. and get the ball back. Yeah, Coach Huck and coaching an extremely good game plan over there. Uh, I think he has all the confidence in his defense right now to stop the rocks and making the rock. I think he sees it as an advantage making the rocks offense go out there and run another couple plays. Just, you know, that first play was so crucial there. You know, with them having two timeouts, they just had to get one stop. And so now they basically force the Shamrocks to have to run the ball three times so they're going to risk giving it back unless they pick up a first down with 35 seconds here before half. Cadets up 21. Hannes will be in the gun. Jones will be the tailback. Hannes is going to drop back, throws a quick screen out to Bliss, and he's going to break free, break one tackle, get up to about the 35-yard line, and the Rocks will have the clock stop to move the chains with the – First down, 28 seconds By left By far here. their best gain on offense. And see him spike it quick. Spike it's it. got to be quicker than that. Hannes will spike it as a cadet dove through the middle there to try to, like, maybe pick it off. I don't know. Usually when something like that happens, the rest quick throw a flag. That was Caleb Bailey. And so it'll be second and 10 here from the 35 with 23 seconds left. Yeah, uh, the quick screen pass is such a big part of Barnesville's offensive game plan in most weeks, but that's the first time I think I've seen them go to it tonight. They haven't been able to run it tonight the way yeah. Fort Fry's been playing Bliss. And so the Rocks will roll out to the right. That's Hannes. He's going to look for Bliss. Four Fry had two guys all over him. Nice job there by number 20 on the coverage, Eliza Johnson. That'll bring up third and 10 here. And another score update I got. Uh, looks like West Jefferson up 12 nothing over Proctorville Fairland. So the winner of this game will play the winner of that game in the regional final. So that's another score to keep your eyes on. Yeah. Division 6, Region 23, right? Yep. So it'll be third down here as Hannes is going to have two receivers to the bottom of your screen. That'll be Costello and Bliss in the slot. He'll have one wing, and that's Connor. He'll motion him out to the slot as he'll drop back, and they're going to set up a screen here to Wise. <laughs> Cadets are all over it. Tackle for a loss of two. If you look, Shamrock's offensive lineman blocking for that screen are 10 yards down the field, and he's getting hit behind the line. I mean, just a got, really nice yeah. job there by the cadet defensive line rally. Doing a nice job on screen retrace. Anytime when you're a defensive lineman, you feel unblocked. It's almost too good to be true. You just yep. stop for a second because something's up, and that's what happened right there. And the cadets are really good at about making something look like it's open and then closing that gap ex uh, really quickly. And I think that's when we saw if the, the Rocks offensive linemen are able to make those couple blocks. I mean, who knows? Ball was thrown right at Wise's waist, but, like, he had to turn around to get it. And he was yeah, slow didn't have, coming didn't, out of it yeah, either. Didn't, that didn't help. Didn't have any momentum going once he caught it. Wasn't able to catch it on the run. And so that'll bring up fourth down here. Ten seconds left, but... They're going to, Coach Huck's going to give his playmakers a chance to make a, something happen in the last seconds of this half. I would, so Bliss, Bliss is actually punting. going to punt it quick, and it's a short one, Brian. And it's going to bounce back to the 45. Just don't touch it. One second left, the clock stopped. 
And I think the Shamrock players are upset with each other. If they didn't touch that for another second, we'd be going to the half. But now you're giving Fort Fry's offense a chance to come back on the field. And we'll see if they try anything here. But I bet they will. I think that's a gift from the gods there. Yeah. That can't happen if you're born. No. So the silly stuff and like that is coach, what will get yeah. you beat against a good team. Coach is extremely unhappy with that. And I don't know, the Rocks, I'd send people even further back here. The Nothing J hurts you except for a touchdown here. The Jets will have three receivers at the bottom of your screen, one lone receiver at the top, and they're going to roll to him. They're going to run out and up, and they got a man streaking down the middle of the field as Ellis is going to be tackled as he said – he was just going to run it, and that'll take us to halftime here in Zanesville. The Cadets up 21 to nothing over the Barnesville Shamrocks. It's a rough first half if you're the Rocks. Uh, offense not able to move the ball very effectively at all. Uh, able to find a play now and then to move the chains, but unable to sustain a drive for the most part. And Fort Fry just throwing so many yeah. different uh, things at the rocks that, I mean, eventually something's going to give. I mean, you just got to hope that your offense can move the ball, keep the Fort Fry offense off the field, and just kind of hold steady until the dam breaks. Yeah. So, we got about 20 minutes here, and so we will check back with you guys right before the start of the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the best band in Shamrock Country, the Bands of Shamrock Marching Band. Let's go ahead and let on to the field by Ms. Widow Wade. This evening our show is being kids from the 80s. Our first song was made in 1985. Make some noise if you remember 1985 by the band Starship. Get up and dance with us as we play We built this city.
Our final song came out in 1988, performed by the one of the original American Idol judges, Paula Abdul. Get out your best 80s gear as we play Cold Hearted. Come on, give it up for the Bonds of Shamrock Marching Band. We would like to thank Bonds of Band teachers and parents, the Bonds of Band, and the high school administrators and teachers for all their continued support. Go Shamrock! I didn't play, I didn't 
Ready? All right, and so we're back here in the second half in Zanesville. Proceeding to get colder, Brian, as we've thrown on our toboggans. Yeah. And uh, even up in the press yeah. box, it's chilly. It's getting a little colder everywhere. And uh, one thing I would just noticed, I don't know if it means anything, but I just saw number 16, Casey Carpenter, the backup quarterback for the Rocks, throwing some on the sideline. I mean, Shamrock's offense has been pretty stagnant to this point, so, I mean, possibly looking for changes here. I doubt they go away from Hannes, but, I mean, something to keep your eye on, I guess. Uh, the Rocks have to come up with something. Uh, I mean, have to come up with a big stop initially. Can't let the score get any worse than it is, and then uh, got to find some kind of rhythm on offense. And yeah. Keep the chains moving and sustain a drive. That's they've moved the chains a couple times, uh, but just have been unable to put anything together. This Gavin Carpenter kicks off, and it's a nice line drive fielded by number 11. That's Brown. He's going to make his way up around the 25, brought down, but he still falls forward for about four extra yards. There, number 30 on the tackle for the Rocks. That's Brady McIntyre, a nice looking freshman for the Rocks. And uh, so the cadets will take over at about the 34 to start the second half. Yeah, and, um, took that right up the middle and just Barnesville kicking it deeper than Fort Fry, yeah. but Fort Fry somehow coming out of it with better field position. So uh, something's got to give there. So the cadets will be in the gun, which is uncharacteristic. I feel like they've been in the gun more and they haven't a pass. So they'll put Brown in motion and he'll take the sweep. Nice block there over there on the edge. It was a pancake block as he'll pick up the first down or be very close to it. Taysen Star wearing all of that one over there on the edge. And that's the thing when you're setting the edge, you got to stay up so you can make a play. You're just making it easier on those guys. And those outside backers for the Rocks trying to set contain on the edge. Doing a good job of getting there, but then they're just sitting ducks for the cadet yeah. guards that are pooling on this action. So Ellis will be in the gun once again in hill motion. That's long, and he'll run a passing concept when a hitch to Brown at five yards. Picks up the first down, though, stays in bounds as the Rocks just try to push him out, but he still continues to plow forward and picks up an extra 15. Yeah, and I don't think Bliss thought he had help over the top, but he was kind of in a zone concept, and he needed to have the flats there or that five-yard out. But he just went deep with the other receiver, and stands for Fry finds the open receiver, and there wasn't a shamrock within five yards and when he yeah. caught it. They're finding, the cadets are finding a way to manipulate the Rocks' rules here with their passing game, and uh, it's been obvious, and I've been really surprised that the cadets have been so much in gun here tonight as Ellis will throw, and that's out the long, makes a man miss. Connor there on the tackle at about the 10-yard line, and another huge gain for the cadets. Well, and you know your offense is working when you make the defense have to go to something completely different, and for the first time that I can remember this season, we're seeing the Shamrocks go with a three-man front, kind of a 3-5 look with two outside backers and three linebackers in the middle, and Still, Fort Fry finding some success. And they've been walking those OBs up, kind of like playing like a, almost like a glorified defensive end outside backer. And yeah, it kind of looks like a 5-4, five, five, honestly. As Brown will take the hand off, and he's going to get around the left side. Touchdown, Cadets. And that was easy. Awfully easy. Only a minute and a half into this third quarter, and we see the Cadets just drive down the field with relative ease. And that was right after, you know, the cadets came out three minutes early and were sitting around waiting while the rocks warmed up and they're able to do that. Yeah. Just uh, methodical and, yep. I mean, that was about as good of a drive as you're going to see in high school football. Just taking what they wanted. So number 81, his PAT is good, and that was Cameron Tennant there. And he's been flawless tonight. He's banged through four PATs. Yeah, barely, that though. First, that first one was a little... <coughs> he was only a couple inches higher than the crossbar. But since then, he's been um, really impressive. Yeah. And so we'll see how the Rocks respond. Down four scores with 10.29 left to go here in the third period in Zanesville. Beautiful facilities here, Brian. Oh, yeah. And top-notch people, top-notch facilities. Want to thank them for their hospitality and letting us come here and bring you this game. 
wish the game was going a little bit better yeah. towards to this point, but I, I really enjoyed, you know, the setup of this um, facility as the high school is right behind the stadium, and so if you were in the high school, you could actually be watching this game. It looks like so pretty interesting concept and here. Visitors press box is nice as um, some home press boxes you'll find. And it's a little two-story action yeah. over there, and then we have our own on the other side. With roof access, and Shamrock's moving their deep returners again. This one's about as deep as they've kicked it, but still the Shamrock's not fielding it cleanly. And that's Wise, and he's going to get up to about the and 25, and they're saying the ball was out. All the cadets are pointing towards their there's end not zone. Been, there's not been any signal from any ref here. I think they called him down, but... And, and they'll we'll give those Shamrocks, Shamrocks the ball, yeah. And a fortunate break there, but I, I'm surprised that the Shamrocks haven't made that adjustment yet. I'd, they, I'd be telling my kicker turners, you got to catch that ball in the air. Yeah. Because by the time they get a clean field on it, the cadets are there. And starting field position, we don't have that stat, but it's had, for the Rocks on offense, it's had to have been inside their own 25 for most of the night. So the Rocks will set up first and ten here in the I formation. They'll turn around and hand it off to Wise. Nothing doing there as number 27, Stone Dixon, once again in on the tackle. As those outside backers have been doing a nice job for Fort Fry, being able to fold in and help with the inside run game. Yep, just a, extremely disciplined. No one over pursues. been interesting to watch you know Fort Fry's defensive line as they have set a strength with those guys as Hannes's pass will be intended for Spencer Bliss incomplete looked like it might have hit him in the hand but I think Owen, like there Brown, hand might fighting. Got, Owen Brown might have got a hand on that Maybe. one uh, misdirected it a little bit but still there, there were two guys right in the same vicinity yeah. there though Bliss still had a chance at it and I don't know if that was by design but yeah the Shamrocks kind of had two routes on top of each other there they had Bliss and Connor running slants like right beside each other, and you don't know if maybe there was a concept built off that or someone messed up or the spacing just wasn't right. Yep. Yeah, again, we see the Rocks yeah, third and long. be third and eight here as Hannes is going to roll out to his left, and he's going to have to Amen. reverse sides in a huge sack here for the Cadets. That was number 53, Caleb Bailey. With a huge and sack there. Those rollouts just have not worked at all for the Rocks tonight. And, again, we're seeing Fort Fry able to break the edge and just come in and Hannes running for his life, unable to get away from all of them. So that'll bring up fourth and about 14, 9, 17 left to go in the third quarter. Cadets up 28 nothing. Alvarez will be the man set back to punt. Back deep to return will be Brown. And it looks to be on the other end. Number four, that's Long, Mason Long. We've called his name a ton tonight. He's going to get around the right side. Finally brought down by number 57 for the Shamrocks. That is Robbie Nixon. Nice tackle there. But, you know, Brian, we, the common thing I've seen tonight is when Fort Fry, any other players get tackled, they always fall forward for three. Yeah. Always. And that's huge. Shamrock's just unable to make clean tackles and stop them for any extra game. I mean, and now something that's in play now, if the Rocks don't get a stop here, we're looking at a running clock uh, for – uh, to at least start this half. Not sure what the rule is in a playoff if that is still in effect. He's got it, a man wide open is. in the corner, but Ellis isn't throwing. He's got pressure, but he still gets it away and completed to his hitch route, and that was Braxton Brown once again. He's got three or four receptions tonight, playing a nice game here, and they'll pick up um, three there, but a hard-earned three for Ellis. And, and that's just the type of night it's been. I mean, the Rocks looks like they have Ellis uh, for a big sack here and able to throw the ball away and then you're thinking oh maybe it's an intentional grounding call but had a receiver there just in the right spot at the right time and instead of a sack for a loss of five it ends up being a gain of three for the cadets for whatever reason four fries ran that concept several times tonight and they've had the corner open for about a 15 yard pattern but haven't thrown it to him once tonight which is interesting as they're going to run a screen back to the other oh, side of the field open. set up beautifully as there's only one man to beat 
And they're going to get down to about the 10-yard line there and a huge 30-yard pickup there for the cadets. And they just got all the Barnesville defense over pursuing to the other end. And there was not a soul on the other side for the screen pass. And so it'll be first and goal from the 10-yard line after the humongous pickup there. Be about a 30-yard reception. So Ellis will be in the gun. He'll take the snap and he'll roll out to his right. And he's got one man. That's Brown. He's going to throw it to him. Knocked out by Bliss after about a gain of two. But, boy, Bliss was playing very soft coverage there and uh, and was still allowed Brown to make the catch. When you get in the red zone, I mean, you got to tighten up a little bit. But, yeah, Bliss was about five yards off of him. Uh, able to limit the run after the catch and plays a big hit on him, but still. Cadet's able to pick up about four. Not quite sure there what was going on with such soft coverage because, you know, there was no one else out there. And so it'll be Ellis under center, and he's going to turn around and hand it off. That's the Welsh, and he's going to walk in. Touchdown. Cadets. And so that'll get us to 34 to nothing here in Zanesville. 7.23 left to go. And it'll be number 81, Cameron Tennant, on to attempt the extra point here for the cadets. Ellis to hold. As the snap is good, hold is down, kick is up, and good. And so midway through the third period here, your score, Fort Fry. 35, Barnesville, nothing here. And Cadets, two possessions in the second half and two relatively easy scores. I hate to say, but it almost looks like the Shamrocks, um, some of these guys are starting to shut down a little bit. You really hate to see that, and especially after the season they've had to this point. But Such a tremendous point, season, you know, and they've won some big games along the way yep. too, And they, but they look uncharacteristic here tonight. And Cadets just getting every everything they want and more. Mm -hmm. Rocks just unable to move the ball. You know, one thing we, we talked about is, you know, like the Cadets have put the ball on the ground a couple times tonight, and – you know, that ball bounces your way, and it's probably looking at a different ball game, but that's just not how it's been. Differently on turf, but... More of a true bounce. Yeah. Oh, did they? Never mind. I'm sorry. I guess the Rocks did play on turf. I, I mean, when we only do their home I games, guess, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to... Uh, well, they would have played at Steubenville. Yep, they so would have played at Steubenville against that Steubenville been Catholic. Warm. So Hannes will drop back, looks, throws, and it's an ugly one. We caught by Spencer Bliss for a That's pickup of about nine, so it'll bring up second one. Another fortunate one. I mean, that is such a long pass. I mean, Hannes' arm strength has improved a lot, and credit to him for making that long of a pass, but that ball is in the air. Feels like an eternity, and Fort Fry had two guys on it, but just in a good spot for Bliss to make a catch. So it'll be second one here. We'll see if the Rocks are able to start a drive. 6.05 and counting here in a third period. Hannes will be under center. Jones the fullback. Wise will be the tailback. And he'll hand it off to Jones. Stuffed for maybe lost one. That's a name we haven't called out pretty much at all tonight. Uh, Connor Jones normally opening holes for Wise and gets the occasional carry. But he's been relatively quiet on offense and defense. Not a not a very good job there by the Rocks offensive line as they were just simply beat off the ball and driven back into the ball carry. And, that, and that'll bring up third and short here. Ball at the 35-yard line here. Hannes will be under center, and he's going to sneak it. And I don't know yeah, if he got it, Brian. Absolutely stuffed. Absolutely no push from the Rocks offensive line. And uh, Fort Fry giving them everything they want. Yep. And uh, it'll bring up fourth and short. And all starts in the trenches at any level, and Fort Fry is just dominating the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And Barnesville's going to have to go for this. I mean, not yep. really any other choice, but... 
four fifteen. See what they come counting. up with. I mean, normally a sneak is about as safe a play as you can have for one yard, and I think they might have lost yards on yep. that last one. So Hannes will be under center. Hard count, and he's going to turn around and throw at the corner. Pass is deflected. Very well defended by Braxton Brown. There as they try to hit Connor on a hitch pattern after they were unable to pick up one yard on two straight attempts. And so that will be a turnover on downs in plus territory. And I tell you, when you have a third and fourth and one and you, I mean, I don't think they trust their line to pick no up choice. a yard on the run. I mean, you don't see often see a pass in that situation. And I think Fort Fry's line just has them all out of whack. Co Coach Blake Allen really have no choice there as uh, Fort Fry has just been completely handling the Rocks up front. Really sad to see. You know, they played so well this season as Fort Fry only picks up about a half a yard. And it'll be second nine here. Maybe lost a yard, actually. But, you know, it's just disappointing when you talk about some of these names. Gavin Carpenter, Quentin Lazier, um, Ethan Spanchenberg, Logan Shepard. They played so well, you know, the whole season tonight. It, they're just outmatched, obviously, as the handoff will go to Brown on the sweep. And he's got lead blockers. So going to get up around the left side there, pick up about six or seven. And, I mean, obviously, the further you go in the playoffs, the tougher it's going to get. But... Through two rounds, you had the Rocks looking pretty good and, uh, I mean, knocking off some lower seeds, but first time they played a seed a little higher than them and just outmatched on both sides of the ball. You know, it's funny because last week when we watched them play Kip, I would say Kip was extremely more athletic than Barnes was and more. They were bigger, faster, and stronger, and the Rocks were still able to come up and win that game as Ellis' handoff to number 12. That is to... Um, Ethan Dusky, and uh, you know the Rocks have been able time and time again to stand up tall, but just for whatever reason tonight they've just been outmatched. I think, uh, yeah, Kip was a little bigger, a little more athletic, a little stronger, but not near as disciplined. And tonight no. we've seen Fort Fry just extremely disciplined. I don't know, other than a holding call in the first half, they uh, haven't been flagged for anything. Here and is just strength running over yep. tacklers. That was number 21, Austin Powell, won a touchdown for the Cadets. Is I wasn't really anticipating making a touchdown call there, so that's why I didn't yeah, really see it. It looked like he was going to get yeah. brought down the backfield and just ran a guy over and went for 20-plus yards in for a touchdown. And that's another thing that hurts. I mean, Cadets just have so many running backs they can throw at you. I mean, yep. that was a hard-nosed run from a guy we typically don't call the name of for the Cadets. And, you know, Powell, I don't think he's even got a touch tonight, and he just ran over two Shamrocks right there. And so Tenet's kick is good, and so your score, Fort Fry 42, Barnesville 0 here in Zanesville. And really no love lost between these two teams, so I don't know. I don't know. Fort Fry, I think, is going to continue to play their game, and if the Rocks don't uh, step up and make tackles, the score could get a little worse. Yeah. Back deep to return for the Shamrocks will be the same three we've seen all year. Owen Y, Spencer Bliss, and Chase Connor. Set the kick off for the Cadets is number 10. And again, having, Ellis. having the deep men line up at the 15, I don't think the kicks made it in the air to the 25 tonight. No. So probably another pooch kick, and it's going to – I mean – We'll see if the Rocks can field it cleanly. They've had trouble all night getting a handle on these kickoffs. You know, it's been interesting because, yeah, you might make an adjustment like that. Maybe there's something we haven't seen on film, Brian, where he can kick it back, and it will be fielded at a line drive by Chase Conner. He's going to get up to the 30, slows down, tackled around the 33. And so that's where the Rocks will set up shop there. So a nice kick there by Ellis. And so maybe he does the have the strength, and they're just playing the away from Bliss. Yeah, deepest kick we've seen tonight. And it's the first one that the Rocks have fielded completely clean. Yeah. But uh, Connor just running into a pile there at about the 32. You know, 33. that's the thing Four Fry does so well is they play complementary football. And what I mean by that is their players know what the other team's trying to accomplish and are able to recognize it and – 
very well coached, as you can tell. And to make an adjustment like that, Ellis has done a beautiful job for them over his career and tonight. As Hannes is going to drop back to throw, he's got Bliss on a hitch and go as it's overshot and complete. Brown on the coverage there for Fort Fry. And it'll be second and ten. Tried a double move there, and uh, Bliss did have a step on him, but the throw just took him a little bit out of bounds. I would have had Bliss run that out of the slot to take the sideline out of it, but... That's just me, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, you do that though into the boundary like that because you know if you do it to the wide side of the field, it's going to be such a long throw. Yeah. We've seen Hannah, so, you know, some of those throws, like you said, feels like they take forever in the air, and so you try to shorten down that throw by doing it on the near side of the field. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what the Rocks do here on second and ten. This will turn around and hand it off to Wise in a nice looking hole. But still, just able to get a, maybe three, maybe three yards. Yeah, boy, the cadets did a beautiful job tonight rallying to the football. Yeah. Was able to get through the line for one of the few times that we've seen tonight, but then just eaten up as soon as he hits the linebacker level. And so that'll yeah. bring us to the end of the third quarter, as the both teams are going to switch the sides, and so it'll be third and seven here to open up the fourth quarter in Zanesville. I don't have the experience playing Fort Fry in football or anything, but I know I played against them in basketball a couple times, and one thing that they were always extremely good at in basketball is identifying what you did well and taking away that aspect from you and making you try to beat them in other, other ways. And we're seeing the same type of thing with the football. I mean, just able to shut down the Rock's explosive plays and – Rocks to this point have just been unable to sustain drives. So we want to do use the opportunity here to thank our sponsors once again for tonight. Also want to thank Strauss Films um, for all the incredible work that they do, you know, making this possible for everyone to watch back home in the warm. Yeah, um, and we know a lot of people just unable to get out to Shamrock games that uh, have family playing, so it's a good opportunity for them to see uh, – see their loved ones play and watch some shamrock football so we want to thank hissom service center artworks bostick concrete campbell plumley funeral homes the elks hartley marshall main street barrel house main screen printing sam welsh we want to thank all of our sponsors once again for your help this season as it looks like there's going to be a full start here on uh, barnesville no, they no? call it encroachment Interesting call there. So they're going to call this on the cadets. Yeah, I was with you. I thought that looked like a player for the Rocks jumped first. So, quick score update. So, River was up early over Shadyside. Now, trailing Shadyside in the third quarter, 29-28. to 28. That's, Yeah, that's a good old-fashioned shootout. As Bliss will take a jet, but they're going to throw a reverse. Flip it back to Hannes. Uh, it's going to be almost picked off. Incomplete as they tried a triple reverse throwback, and uh, the cadets were still all over it. And so it'll be fourth down here for the Shamrocks. It'll be fourth and about three as it looks like they're going to bring the punt unit out. And that was digging into the bag of tricks that we hadn't seen, but the only problem with that is the Fort Fry players ran with the initial uh, pitch, and um, we're already on that side of the field, so when the throwback came, they were able to deflect it, and I thought it was going to be picked off initially. Play clock down the four, so Rocks hurry up to, to punt as it'll be snapped to Alvarez. Direct snap, he's going to plow forward and try to pick up the first down, but he's going to break out of it and lose yards. Forward progress granted, but I it's still good. think he might be Close. short. I think he's going to end up being short, but it. So even one of the Rock's biggest, you know, former fullback in Alvarez there tries to plow forward on the fake punt and just wasn't able to pick it up as the cadets were just more physical and uh, didn't allow it to happen. Well, maybe, actually, they might. Well, yep, the cadets' offense is out yeah. there. Barnes will we're kind of waiting to see what the official call was, but the officials well, the thought official, it was obvious. The official made it a lot earlier than that. I just don't think the Rock sideline saw the call. As the handoff here for the cadets will be handed off. That's to number 21. That's Austin Powell as we see some reserves in here for Fort Fry as they uh, do a little subbing here. A lot of new names will be thrown at you here for the fourth quarter. 
I don't see any of their uh, main top dogs other than maybe Colin Welsh still in the field. So they'll put a man in motion. They'll turn around and they'll hand it off. That's two. Number 27, that is Stone Dixon, on the handoff there. And they'll pick up about two or three, be close to the first down marker. It'll be third and about one here for the Cadets. Number 34, that's Clayton Miller in, a freshman at quarterback for the Cadets. Welsh will be the lone fullback in the backfield. Tie it in two wings and a receiver as they'll put a man in motion. And that's number 21. That is um, Austin, Powell Austin Powell. And there was a flag thrown on the play. This will only be the second flag we've seen all night on Fort Fry. Because they played a pretty much clean game, Brian. Yeah. Um, had, a, had a holding call uh, that was really unneeded in the first half where they really yeah. had a first down. And other than that, and an encroachment. Remember. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And here's another holding that will back up and negate the first down for the cadets. And so it will be third and long here. And uh, Like we said, Blue Fry is not going to beat themselves. Uh, if you want to do it, you are going to have to beat them because they aren't going to help you too much. And, I mean, they fumbled more times than I expected them to tonight, but able to recover all of them and just get the bounces. But so it'll be third and about 13 here with 8.27 and counting left to go here in the final period. Which is crazy because for a lot of these seniors, um, this will be their final playing days for the rest of their lives. Which is always an emotional thing. And I think that's why you see Barnesville's first string defense still out there for the most part. Most of the seniors. You know, other maybe one or two. Um, the majority of these rocks will never be able to put on the pads again, and it's a very emotional thing. You know, when you think about the game of football, it's incredible. You know, it's funny because it is just a game that you play for 60 minutes, Brian, but it brings this group of kids together. It brings this group of coaches together, and, and, and all the community members. I mean, you look out in the stands here, no one's really left yet, even though the scores. Um, Highly in favor of the cadets, but you know it's funny how a simple game like that can bring so many people together in a community. Yeah, and uh, Barnesville's always been a pretty big football town and highly supportive of the Rocks. Um, just a really good turnout. I mean, I would say that there was uh, the crowd for Barnesville tonight, probably more yeah. than the home team. And so. Pitch will be made out here to Colin Welsh, and he's going to get wrapped up around the 40. And that, on the tackle there was number three, Owen Wise, and number 11, Connor, Chase Connor. And so it'll bring up fourth and about nine here for the Cadets after the nice pickup by Welsh. It'll be fourth down with about 750 and counting in the fourth quarter. And now they run out their punt team. <laughs> Initially, I thought uh, Coach Huff yeah. would be going for this. Be about 10 seconds left on the play clock, so they'll have to hurry up and get set. Bliss back deep to return for the Shamrocks. They'll be settled up around the five-yard line. The punt here for the Cadets will be number 63. That's Carter Brooker, and Ball's it's going to be a short one. Nowhere near Bliss. And it has been apparent that Fort Fry has made their game plan based off around Spencer Bliss and uh, they just wanted to completely eliminate what the Rocks do yeah. best and get him well, the football. I mean, bottom line, on offense, on the offensive side of the ball, Fort Fry just a lot harder to prepare for than Barnesville. I mean, Barnesville runs a couple different concepts, for the, but for the most part, they try to establish the run up the middle. They'll throw in a few screens there and then just try to get Bliss the ball in as many ways as possible. And Fort Fry just shut down all aspects of that tonight. And, you know, it's interesting you bring up that point in preparation as Hannes will be under center and will put Chase Connor in motion. He'll turn around and run a, a counter trade back to Owen Wise. Cadets are all over it. But, you know, in preparation for Fort Fry, Fort Fry only runs about 10 to 12 plays. But they all use that, like I talked about earlier, the if-then um, system. And, you know, they do make all their calls based off of what you 
what you're giving them and how you're playing stuff. And so it's really interesting. And they'll run those same plays out of a hundred different, you know, looks. And so while back home it looks the same one, they're always in one tight end or two tight ends with two wings, you know. It's you can do it to the left or the right, and you can do it with different ways. You set your strength, you know, either ways, and so you start running the same play about four different ways, yeah. and um, you know that's how you create a complex playbook. And then you just drill all the stuff you run consistently in practices. Hannah throws a nice pass here to Spencer Bliss. He's going to pick up about 20 yards here on the pitch and catch, and so that'll be a Shamrock first down. And I know the Shamrock defensive coaches had a lot of uh, contingency. I mean, just tough to prepare for and had a lot of, if they're in this formation, we got to do this. And I mean, just tough to cover all that in a week with high school kids. Tough for college teams to do that, let alone high school yeah. level. So Hannos will be under center. Jones will be the fullback. Wise will be the tailback, and he'll pitch it to him around the left side. Good blocking up there as he's going to make one man miss two. Gets about three on the play. And so it'll bring up second seven here with 514 and counting left to go in this ball game in Zanesville. Cadets up 42 to nothing. And it looked like uh, Wise was going to have some room on the edge to run and just closed it quickly. I mean, I think he ran, ended up running about 20 yards to pick up two been so impressed with this four fries defense you know rallying tonight so Hannes will be in the gun Jones will be the tailback as he'll drop back and look and he's going to run a tunnel screen to Bliss and it was thrown high but Bliss snags it busts through the hole and it hits a seam finally corralled by several cadets as he'll make it up to the opposite side of the 50 at about the 48 and so a nice pitch and catch there and I tell you, Ford Fry wasn't fooled by it, but Bliss just made a great play on it, able to snag the ball from what would have probably been another interception for the Fort, and uh, just able to catch it with some momentum. And I mean, things have opened up a little bit, but I think they are going against the Cadets' second string yeah. defense. A lot of young guys in for the Cadets on defense. So Hannes will be under center in the eye. Wise will be the tailback. As he'll drop back, looks, throws, fires to Bliss on a comeback. And he's going to try to get out of bounds, but they're going to say he was. And so that'll stop the clock. Well, the clock's still running because the score, yeah. I forgot. So 340 and counting here. And third another pitch and catch about 15 yards there on a deep comeback. It'll be first and 10. Tell you all season we've been saying Spencer Bliss is normally good to make one guy miss at least on every time he touches the ball. I mean, poor Fry just so sound on tackling tonight that no one's really been able to make anyone miss. So Hannes will drop back and he's going to do a play fake, but it was to the wrong side and he'll throw it down to Bliss. Caught down to about the two or three. And so the Rocks will have it first and goal at the three-yard line with 3:04 and counting. And a chance to avoid the shutout. Tonight. Yeah. You know, you see the uh, impressiveness of Spencer Bliss now. You know, a lot of these young guys weren't really preparing for Bliss. They were running the scout team this week, so it just shows you the amount of preparation and you know how good of a job Coach Eric Huck does for Fort Fry. As the Rocks will be in a tackle. First time we've like seen this formation over. from him tonight. And they'll be in the heavy eye. And they're going to hand out the Bliss. Touchdown, Shamrocks. Spencer Bliss finds pay dirt here. 229 left to go in the fourth. Rocks break the shutout. As it looks like Carpenter will be on to kick the extra point here. Van Horn will be the hold. So, snap is good, a hold is down, kick is up, and good by a mile. So that'll bring our score here in Zanesville. The Fort Fry Cadets, 42, the Barnesville Shamrocks, 7. And a good drive by the Rocks there, but uh, just a little too little too late for the most part. But, I mean, that's something to build on at least.
Another score update in Ferry. Shady side up 37 to 30 over River in the third quarter, deep in the third quarter. And I know Shady side now on their third string quarterback, which for Shady side, I mean, they run the ball a lot and everything, so not as big of a deal. But what is the big deal there is I believe uh, Beckett is now their quarterback. That's taking one of your big skill guys yeah, Corey away Beckett. from his normal position and having to take some snaps at quarterback so I mean that, and River playing about as good as anyone around here right now uh, so at least one of those teams will be playing for a regional championship we already saw St. Clairsville last night mm -hmm. win their semifinal game and Molly Wap Meadowbrook with their second string yep. quarterback so Carpenter will be set to kick off here this one's high and it'll be fielded at about the 20 barely by the cadets and he'll get tackled Around the 16 or 17, but, you know, you talk about Shady Side. You know, the one name we called all night that game was uh, Wyatt Ryman, and he got an injury later off in the season. You know, he had assists, from what I heard, I believe, on his wrist, and it ended up um, affecting him pretty bad one game, from what I heard. And then uh, after that, it really hasn't affected him at all like they thought it was going to. And now, according to sources, you know, I have with Shady Side, they uh, – He's back in action, and so I'm sure that he's probably beginning to take over that game. But yeah, that game's a far cry from that uh, regular season encounter yeah. that was 14 and 12. So Fort Fry will be under center here, 135 and counting as the clock stops. As they're just trying to run the clock down, as they'll hand it off. That's to number 38. That's Clay um, Gruy. And for the cadets. Now we'll see the Shamrocks empty the bench and yep. throw out the second team defense. Yep, and this will be the one chance Kurt, for a standing yeah, curtain call for the seniors yep. and the first string. And boy, it, you know, you never want to see it end this way for a team, but in the state of Ohio, there's seven divisions and only uh, seven teams are going to finish the season with a win, you know. And that's always a hard pill to swallow, especially, you know, with these seniors and what they've meant to this program over the last several years. And I was fortunate enough to coach these kids when they were in junior high and um, when they first got into high school, their freshman and sophomore years. Number 24 for the cadets. That'll be a handoff to Dakota Snodgrass. But, um, you know, this, this group of seniors have meant so much to this program, and you never want to, you know, see it end this way for them. But... Um, their efforts and contributions to the program and to the community will never be forgotten. So they, they should not hold their heads, you know, hang their heads, but they should hold their heads up high and be proud of what they accomplished. Yep, and that will do it for this game. Uh, do not have to take another snap. So um, congratulations to the Fort Fry Cadets. They will be playing next week uh, for a chance at, or regional championship yep. against, uh, I don't know who, uh, that yeah. game hasn't gone final yet, it will be the winner of West Jefferson or Proctorville Fairland, so um, that's one to keep your eyes on, uh, but yeah, that win a good rock season at, what, 10-2? That game will pick up at 7 p.m. Sunday. Trying to find a score here for Fairland in... West Jefferson here right before we wrap up to see who the cadets will play next week. But yeah, we just want to acknowledge, you know, those seniors and although it wasn't the way they wanted it to end, um, you know, they did a lot of good stuff in this program. So nothing they should be ashamed of and their contributions to the community will always be remembered. And good luck to the Fort Fry cadets next week and whoever they play, they'll have to make a a haul for yeah, whichever looking, team it is. Looking for a back-to-back -back, uh, trip to the Final Four. Yep. So, I, I mean, just impressive stuff from yeah. the Eastern District team. I mean, historically, other than Steubenville, you don't see a lot of uh, teams from the Eastern District making uh, – making noise across the state and playing uh, deep into the playoffs every year. Nope. And that's one thing, you know, Four Fries almost kind of created a dynasty in all their um, sports as we got a score update for you here. So it looks like West Jefferson's up 26-8 to 8 
And from people I heard, um, they talked about West Jefferson's got a couple really nice linemen, and so they might give Fort Fry some trouble. And West Jefferson's got a couple kids that will be primed and ready to go play college ball in the future. So it looks like right now Fort Fry is going to be playing West Jeff. I would speculate that game will be maybe in Newark, maybe even here again in yeah, Zanesville or Chillicothe. Chillicothe was another one that popped into my head, so that's going to be an interesting one to see. I mean, this cadets team is going to be a tough out. I yep. Mean, and they'll be playing for a regional championship. But uh, we just want to thank our sponsors again for all that they've contributed to Strauss Films. And we want to thank Strauss Films for giving us this opportunity to broadcast to you guys back home. Yep, yeah, and it's been a fun season. Yeah. I've enjoyed every minute of it being up here uh, talking football with you guys. Uh, hopefully we'll be back next season doing yep. this for you again. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And we are signing off from here in Zanesville. Your final, Fort Fry Cadets 42, Barnesville 7. Good night, everybody.